Hi there and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about backpacking in the Philippines. Now I guess first So I guess first of all, why should you listen to us? Well we've just got back from a one month trip to the Philippines and then previously a couple of years ago I traveled there for another month as well so that's two months of experience backpacking so let's get into it. Getting around the Philippines now Philippines is quite a big country with a lot of different islands and it can take a long time to get between places I do kind of recommend going to one area of the Philippines and seeing that really well that way you don't have too many long travel days um, now when you are traveling there's always ferries between the islands or you can fly. Now flights generally go to and from Manila or Cebu um, to whatever destination you're going to. To get around on each island there's buses and on some of the quieter islands that'll just be a small minivan. Um, and then when you get to an island we highly recommend that you just get a motorbike at the port. That way you've got the freedom to drive around the island wherever you want, find some accommodation when you leave the island you give the motorbike back. Um, motorbike rental usually costs about 300 pesos per day so pretty cheap 300 up to 500 depends where you go. In Manila city there's a really good metro to access some parts of the city but besides that there's not really normal buses so in the Philippines they have what's called jeepneys and these are some usually very brightly colored old trucks um, and you jump into the back of the jeepney on the front it'll say the name of the destination. Typical jeepney fare is from about 7 peso to 20 peso so it's a very very cheap way to get around the cities and it's quite fast too because the drivers generally want to get there and they will have a big cloud of black smoke coming out the back but will generally get you to your destination cheap and fast. When you want to get off the jeepney just have a coin and tap it somewhere like usually on the, the roof or on the metal bar and that is a signal to the driver to stop. Just watch what the locals do and if you need to ask, just ask, most of them speak English. Sometimes to get between small islands or not so popular destinations you'll have to get a pump boat and these are a lot of fun except they do have a really really noisy engine in them so I do recommend taking some earplugs for the boat ride uh, but this is like the most traditional way of getting around the Philippines. The people in the Philippines are super friendly and they speak pretty good English in most places. So if you ever need help, just stop and ask someone. They're generally pretty helpful. Everyone around the neighborhoods and the villages will say hello and bye bye Luano, bye bye. Ask you where you're going, it's pretty common. If you get the chance and see some kids playing, join in with them. They love seeing you and looking at your camera or whatever you have and they're really fun and a great time to play with. People in the Philippines are generally pretty honest. We had a really good experience. I like to say often you can ask the homeless person in the street for help because they speak English as well. Some of the smaller islands they won't but in the cities they will. Food in the Philippines is generally a lot of rice and meats. Uh, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, it can be challenging, especially if you just want to eat street food. Barbecued banana and then it's coated in butter and sugar. It's my favorite here. Uh, typically street food is like point point, so they have a whole lot of dishes and then you just point to the things that you want. The other thing is there's a lot of barbecue, so these will either be small um, meat skewers uh, typically chicken or pork. For dinner tonight is the barbecue. They dip them in sauce and they're really delicious and you can get rice with them. And the other thing is barbecue chicken and barbecue pork belly. So you get a whole chicken or a slice of pork belly that's been grilled over hot coals. And it's super cheap and it's delicious. What to bring? Not very much. Try and travel with a carry-on bag. Um, especially if you're doing internal flights and lots of ferries. Because sometimes even getting through doorways can be quite hard if you're tall and got a really big backpack. Um, you don't need very much, so bring some shorts, t-shirt, uh, whatever electronics, camera gear you want. Filming with a drone in the Philippines is really awesome and I'll cover this in another video. Um, so definitely recommend bringing that, but 
try and travel light otherwise it's going to be a little bit miserable on the travel days remember it's usually about 35 to 40 degrees um, and can be very humid so it's hard work carrying a 25 kilo backpack the best thing we bought for our trip was a snorkel and mask that meant that everywhere we went if we saw some good snorkeling we could just jump in and go and then occasionally we would hire fins if we needed to but at least we had the basics so how much does it cost to eat we would usually pay around two us dollars per person um, and and it goes upwards from there so that's for street food and then if you go into a, a restaurant or something you can pay pretty much any amount that you want to pay people in the philippines get paid about seven us dollars a day for their wages um, and it, it goes up from there and maybe a builder might be paid kind of 10 to 17 dollars so that's what their wages are so if you're eating street food um, you're going to be paying you know not very much for your food if you're eating in touristy areas then you're going to pay a lot more obviously what are the toilets like most of the toilets that we saw at least were manual flush toilets so not your squat toilets like you see in some parts of Asia. Toilet paper generally goes in the rubbish bin. They don't like the paper in their, in their system. Often you'll find public toilets, you have to pay five pesos to use the facilities. A couple of times we found a toilet that didn't have a toilet seat and it's just something you've got to embrace. It works perfectly fine still. Don't be afraid to go where others haven't been yet. Some of our best experiences were just getting a map and a motorbike and driving um, away from where everyone else was and that's where you'll find some of the most beautiful parts of the country. White sand beaches, cliffs, beautiful places where there's no other people except maybe a few local fishing boats. There's no need to bargain. Um, the only exception to that rule is taxis, same as anywhere else in the world. Definitely make sure you agree on the price. But if you're just buying street food or some clothes, generally the price is going to be written up. And if it's not, just ask and that is the price. Don't try and, and bargain to half the price or you will kind of offend the locals. Public internet can be pretty limited so we highly recommend getting a SIM card. We used Globe and we found it pretty reliable. There was only a couple of places that we didn't have reception. If luck turns against you and you find yourself in need of medical attention, um, doctors are really cheap. So for probably around $50, you can go to the doctor, spend some time in the hospital, get some tests done and then leave. So don't be scared. Um, and the level of medical care there is, is very good. So don't be afraid to go to the doctors. So that's what we think you should know before you go traveling to the Philippines. Definitely check the country out. It is one of the most stunning countries that I've ever been and they've got probably the most friendly people that I've ever met out of 60 countries on six continents. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it helped you a little bit. If you've got any more questions, please just leave a comment down below the video and I'll do my best to answer. So I hope you enjoyed and until our next destination, thanks for watching.